I mean, imagine GTA 5 on smartphone. That's something everyone is dreaming about, right? And what? This is a Tomb Raider running on Android smartphone. No frame drops, no problems at all. That's all possible due to Windows 11 running on an Android smartphone. <laughs> Whoa, this is Windows 11 running on a smartphone. Oh my god. I mean, that is actual Windows 11, not a virtual machine, not a remote desktop. This is running natively on a smartphone. Touchscreen works fine, genuinely smooth, no lags at all. Pretty impressive, right? You can see the specifications of the phone in Task Manager. It is utilizing Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset to power this bad boy. So obviously I'm not lying to you. This is real life. Actually, I'm using OnePlus 60 Android device to run Windows 11. And the great thing is, you could even run few respectable AAA titles on that. Seriously, this thing is a lot more powerful than you think. Pretty extraordinary, right? I'm talking about PC gaming, yes, you heard it right. All on your smartphone that is running Windows 11. And today we are going to show you exactly how all this works. Actually, this is very easy to understand. As you may know, Microsoft does provide ARM version of Windows 11, which you can find on Surface Pro X or any other ARM based PC. Your phone, however, is based on ARM processor. And due to the fact that Qualcomm is making those same processors, both for your phones and PCs, few PC driver may be even compatible with your phone. So running Windows on a smartphone isn't as difficult as you might think. <laughs> well, now the actual problem comes down to the booting procedure. The UEFI. What? But how could you load UEFI and boot into Windows on Android smartphone? Hmm. Well, to clear up the problem, let me introduce you to Project Renegade. This is an open source project that helps you to run your Windows or Linux natively on your phone. They came up with this concept of faking Windows UEFI as a Linux kernel. So while booting from your phone, it will be like, ah, Linux kernel, you must be running Android OS, right? No, I'm running Windows 11 alternatively. <laughs> With the tools they provide, you may compile your own UFI by yourself or just find one that works for your particular device. This is the disguised Linux kernel that helps you to boot desktop OS from your Android bootloader. And also they accumulated plenty of useful drivers and modified them so that you can use them for your smartphone, especially Snapdragon 845 platforms. So just in case, if you are using Snapdragon 845 chips, you may definitely take a look at this project. This project Renegade step by step tutorial in the description below. Uh, now let's get to the process. Well, the setup procedure is sort of a mess. You will experience constant crash. <laughs> you will experience constant crash, blue screen of death. And if either of those take place, you may need to restart your phone and restart from the very beginning. As you can already tell, the step-by-step -step process covers a lot of great details. For sure, I have to make very in-depth video on that. If you want to see the step-by-step -step tutorial, do let me know in the comments down below. Also, make sure to hit that like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our latest videos. And now let's continue to the fun part. Can it run games? Whoa, so <laughs> finally. So after centuries of tinkering and tweaking and praying to the daddy of the windows, finally right here, we are running one and only the Windows 11. And now let's see how it works. Well, the touchscreen works. However, the UI is kind of a terrible. So you certainly need keyboard and mouse to set up everything. Uh, but beside this, Windows 11 desktop is perfectly running on a smartphone. <laughs> Whoa, look at the start menu. How tiny it is. And you can even lock and unlock the display by swiping. Hmm, that seems like Windows phones are still alive. Let's turn the display and set the DPI. Well, it appears a lot more like a PC now. Now let's take a look at the specification. Here we got 8 core CPU from Snapdragon 845 chipset. We got 8 gigs of RAM and of course Adreno 630 GPU. Well, looks like the GPU driver is running just fine. So maybe we should run some benchmarks. So honestly, like at this point, I was quite surprised to see all my GPU and CPU properly detected. 
And what a better way to test it? Well, Cinebench, I ran a test and then you can't believe what I'm seeing right here. What do you think? Can it even able to run the test? Let's start. Starting a test was quite a bit janky and once it got started, I have to speed up the footage by quite a lot and you can see just for the single test, it took like something like 52 minutes to complete one Cinebench test. And finally, and what? Whoa, we got bit over 1000 Cinebench R23 multi core score and a lovely 250 single core performance. Oh my goodness. Just for the comparison, here is i7 7700K, which is scoring 1230 in single core. And if we estimate the real performance, it's getting pretty close to i5 4th gen. I guess you can't believe how sluggish it is. Well, it took like 53 minutes to complete the entire Cinebench test. <laughs> yeah, that's quite painful to make this video for sure. Just for the dedication, hit that like guys. But considering the Cinebench, it is an x86 application. It does not natively support ARM processor. But considering that, it's truly not that bad. I mean, after all, we are emulating desktop chips with an vintage smartphone processor and a multi-core performance it's still on par with something like 4th gen intel gen chipset and running 3d mark even impressed me further you can see this benchmark scores are pretty decent now the question is well can it run crisis i mean the most power hungry crisis 3 we are going to try and here we go guys now from this tiny little processor i'm not even expecting the crisis 3 to run but Anyway, let's try to run it. We got AMD logo on the phone. How weird that is. Technically, it's not a lie. Since Adreno GPUs originated from AMD technologies back in 2008. Okay, well, the menu looks uh, very stable at 60 FPS. Promising. Looks like we got a native 1080p. I will be super impressed if this game even runs. Oh wait, wait a minute, oh no, whoa whoa, someone get that fire extinguisher, this phone is getting so much hot. I almost forgot about that thermals, the phone is burning hot right now. I guess we should add active cooler on that guy and make sure it doesn't explode. Alright, the moment of the truth. Oh my god, it actually works. Apparently, we are not getting a lot of frames right here. The game is a bit janky, but hey, it works. I mean, that is amazing. Have you ever seen such graphics on a smartphone? <laughs> now let's try to walk and shoot. Uh, it's not that really playable, but I'm super satisfied. I mean, we are getting single digit frame rate. But remember, this is 1080p resolution and desktop level graphics. So if we can lower the resolution, it might be actually playable. Uh, but, <laughs> but the problem is, we can't really switch to the lower resolution easily on the smartphone. Neither from the desktop nor inside the game. Uh, believe me, I tried it, but I simply can't able to switch the resolution. So if you want to lower the resolution, you need to be a little bit creative. And luckily, with the help of window mode, you can change the resolution to anything you want. So what we can do right here is setting the resolution down to 540p with windowed mode and then use windows magnifier to enlarge the window. So it almost looks like full screen. What a genius idea, right? And as expected, we got around 30 FPS that is totally playable. Well, <laughs> well, especially in the winter season, you can expect some nice fun out of this heated bad boy. So let's get going boys. Let's play some Crisis. Remember, we are playing this onto an Android smartphone. This is incredible. Oh, no. Let's just forget what I said. We can only get something like 10 frames per second when actually playing. The frames drop a lot, especially in complicated scene like this one, where there are lots of trees and lots of stuff. I guess the problem right here is a CPU bottleneck. This might not be a great gaming experience, but hey, it is a three-year-old smartphone, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> and we are running Power Hungry Crisis 3, so I think this is more than enough. Can it run Crisis? Yes, definitely it can. 
Now let's try some games like CSGO. Since we have no issues with crises, this should be a piece of a cake. And guess what? Definitely it runs better than crisis. And we are at native 1080p and we are getting around 20 to 30 frames per second on average. That's pretty smooth. So why don't we just have some fun with it and play along. Yo 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 guys, so before we start playing, we have to do something. Um, I'm not talking about hit that like, share this video, subscribe. Uh, yeah, although you can definitely do that, but I need to put active cooler uh, and then make sure our phone doesn't explode and boom, there we go. Hmm, <laughs> well, playing CSGO on phone doesn't make you more competitive, but that is definitely a unique experience, I have to say that. And maybe we should try something else, something even crazier. Yes, this is a Euro Truck Simulator 2, and since we have all the USB ports connecting a steering wheel, it is not much of a problem. Um, using a steering wheel to control this smaller device what in the world I'm doing right here? Nevertheless, it's quite interesting. Games like Euro Truck Simulator are not that power hungry, but seems like it performs worse than Crisis. Well, that's a bit weird. Now let's take a look at the task manager. We can see that the GPU usage is even lower than 30%. Oh no. So again, we got a CPU bottleneck. In fact, this happens in quite a lot of games. For example, Skyrim, you almost never fully utilize your GPU under low resolution settings. At first moments, you can get frame rates as high as 40s, but as you start to move the camera to much complicated scenes, the frame rate drops significantly, but luckily, some games we tried actually got really good performance. And what? This is a Tomb Raider running on Android smartphone. At 1080p, we got solid 20 frames per second. No frame drops, no problems at all. And this one is a real AAA title and it is getting pretty decent graphics on it. So it's really impressive performance and if we lower the settings to 540p and zoom in, you know what? We can get solid 30, 40 or even 50 frames per seconds. That is butter smooth. Seriously, wow. When I played Tomb Raider on my laptop back in the old days, the frame rate was not even really higher than this. So can we say this is a flagship graphic quality of mobile gaming, even surpassing S22 Ultra, ray tracing? Maybe I'm talking too much. Oh right, interesting enough, this game can even support AMD stress effects, which makes Lara Croft's hair graphic burner. Trying it on smartphone doesn't hurt, right? So yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what in the world? Press FX running on Snapdragon GPU. That seems like we didn't got any problems other than losing some frames here and there. But hey, look at those beautiful hair. That was definitely worth trying, right? Looks like we have tortured this smartphone a little bit too hard. But hard is never hard. I think we should try something even bigger. Maybe ray tracing. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's not entirely impossible. Well, Crytek, the developer of Crysis, has supported a special RT with their CE5 engine. Even if your GPU does not have RT core or hardware acceleration, you can still run ray tracing. Well, they have a demo called Neon Noir which you can download for free and now let's try that on our smartphone. Okay, so looks like we are now in the menu and my cursor is barely moving. Uh, 
oh well i have a really bad feeling about this but it is running so i guess red racing does work on snapdragon 845 but the frame rate we got oh my god just 0.2 fps that's one frame every five seconds that feels like i'm gaming on rocks and stones actually we are not even using gpu at all and i think it might be a problem related to qualcomm's gpu driver those tiny little gpus won't just run 64 games at all instead the games run on virtual gpu simulated by cpu no wonder why performance is so horrible the same thing happens in gta 5 yeah everyone's favorite you can definitely enter into the game but we got horrible lower 1 fps frame rate i mean imagine gta 5 on smartphone that's something everyone is dreaming about right i really wish we can achieve that but anyways and i think we have done lots of stuff with this smartphone make sure to like this video hit that like button subscribe to our channel and there will be more interesting projects coming soon i'm your host kedar from how to guys thanks for watching